Hmm. Defiant Saudi women stun onlookers by wearing Western clothes in public. So, um, okay, last year, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman Ben Salman hinted in an interview that the dress code may be relaxed, saying that the robe is not mandatory in Islam. Um, however, in Saudi Arabia, it is outrageously important that women cover in veil, head to toe. Um, uh, a lot of them even cover their face. Uh, it's and this is this is more of a cultural uh, law in Saudi Arabia, um, and so. Women have been, and, and Armin, I don't know if you have like a picture up or showing yeah. a little bit of the video. These women uh, in beautiful makeup, beautiful bright clothes, uh, just went walking down the street. And one of the women who did it said that other ladies came up to them, her in, in full veil and they, they were asking her, are you, are you a celebrity? Are you famous? Are you a model? <laughs> Wanting to know, <laughs> first of all, she's gorgeous. Okay, <laughs> And I mean... I it's wow and so um yeah like they're they're just confused as to why a regular looking woman is walking on the streets because in Saudi Arabia even women who are not from Saudi Arabia um typically dress in in the appropriate uh wear there so uh it's just it's fascinating and so a lot of people are like oh she's she's going to be arrested she's going to be killed yeah. actually uh what what she protests here is there isn't a law specifically saying she has to wear right. the clothes however there are moral police you know around and people who who won't like her walking around uh freely in public who who might attack her um, my understanding is that the the role of the religious police uh, moral police in saudi arabia has been reduced right so that's this, correct yes yeah. so but she's saying they, they're still around you yeah, know it's still been around reduced. yeah but this, by the way this makes iran the only country that is so aggressive again you know against everybody not wearing their job but um but i'm actually kind of happy pleasantly surprised that you know when she's because i knew even the if, even if the government is backing down I knew that people were going to be like shocked to see just somebody walking like that in the streets in Saudi Arabia, uh, even if there's not any lo not any laws against that. But I'm but I'm kind of surprised with, to see that you know this is great that the women that are going to her they're not telling her to cover up, they're telling her like, are you a celebrity? <laughs> that's a, yes. That's a <laughs> yes. Are you a model? That is, it's amazing. That's kind but of no, cute. And you bring up, it's <laughs> yeah. so cute. Yeah. You bring up a really good point because I don't know if you remember us reporting on this or not. But right. once they once they allowed women to start driving in Saudi Arabia, um, and that was law, right? By law, women were allowed to. Even some guards were handing out roses to women driving on the first day they were allowed to drive. Right. Um, so some people were fully for it there. However, some women, uh, you know, there was six different cases where uh, morality police of their own. Um, I'm not sure if they're actually involved in that or not, but they were so mad that women are driving that they actually burned women's cars yeah. um, and took took it into their own hands to do it. So that's what I, I fear for for her is someone walking by and being so angry and outraged at her just being this beautiful woman. And by the way, she's, you know, she's in pants. She's she's not dressed Im immodestly. Um in, in, in our standards, anyway. Uh, but someone well, still be might to. be so outraged. She should. Yeah. Someone still might be so outraged that they might do something to her, and that's yeah. that's terrifying. So here's the thing, though. I just want to caution people, because there's a lot of changes happening in Saudi Arabia, and these are called reform and stuff like that. Women be able to drive, women be able to come out in the streets like this. But I, these, just be careful, because you, and this is not a contradiction, okay? You could feel good for these women while at the same time not falling in, not falling for this whole reform nonsense in Saudi Arabia, okay? Again, this is not a contradiction. You could feel good for these women being able to enjoy more liberties while understanding that all of this reform nonsense is a distraction from the world's greatest human rights crisis, humanitarian crisis of our lifetime, right? This is a government, Saudi Arabia is, 
using starvation against children as in as a weapon in war they're bombing mosques they're bombing ports knowing that it was used as a way to bring medicine to a place where disease is spreading millions of people are now close to starvation close to dying from starvation millions and many of these people are children right um and and this is a government that even within saudi arabia all the women that pushed for these rights for that pushed for these the freedom to be able to walk like this or to be able to drive so, a lot of them are now in prison uh, many political activists were killed right before these reform and, and these reform were meant to distract from that right uh, ma many even religious leaders that, that had a different views from the government in Saudi Arabia were either arrested or now in prison or they were killed okay this is no nothing there's nothing about this that should be celebrated again this is not a contradiction you while all of this is true while you shouldn't be distracted from what a what a nightmare Saudi Arabia is causing for millions of people you could still be happy for at least a few women in Saudi Arabia that they're enjoying their liberties more. You know, you could do yeah. that both at the same time. But understand that the whole uh, ref every time you hear anything reform, just realize that this is probably a distraction. This is true when it comes to Islam Islamic reform outside of Islamic countries. This is true when it came to reform in Saudi Arabia. But it's also true when it comes to reform in Iran. Okay. The reformists in Iran. It's always a distraction from a greater crime. Don't buy. Don't buy it. Uh, Banksy is saying, "I see Islam as a cancer, and if you don't hold back, it's growth. It's growth. Okay, this they will change the demographics of every place. I don't know what you're saying. This is how these countries are dealing with that. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what. Well, that's that's. Uh, I think he's referring to our last bit of news, and yeah. I think we should address that as well, uh, Banksy, because well, the way that this. Well, this let's is start being just handled, now. Let's start just now because I need to cut these stories, and they need to be about one story at a time, right? But let me finish. Yeah. Let's finish the top comments, and then we'll address what Banksy says. Savannah so, saying, Savannah saying, good for her. I hope she stays safe. Uh, Ag Agnes is saying, I really hope they are safe. Imagine being forced to wear something that covers up 95% of your body just because religion. It's not actually, it's worse than the fact, I just want to make it clear. The point of, the problem with the hijab, especially mandatory hijab, is not that the inconvenience of having to cover up, okay? It's the fact that somebody gets to tell you what to wear, right? It just puts you in a position, it, it shows your place in the society and the example i i give for that is imagine if you were talking you know my wife and myself and you were talking the three of us were talking and my wife interrupts me at some point and i tell my wife that you should not have not interrupted me go sit in the corner for half an hour so that you learn your lesson and she goes and sits, she sits in the corner for half an hour and then you look at me and like what the fuck just happened here are you seriously is this seriously uh, did this really happen and i could respond to you well what's wrong with that sitting down is not that abusive we sit like we sit down all the time i could sit down right now sitting down is not an inconvenient thing um but you 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 would understand and you would rightfully point out it's not about sitting down whether it's inconvenient or not the fact that i get to tell her to sit down and she has to listen just shows about the nature of our relationship it just shows her position in our marriage shows you know how worthless she is and how in 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 our in, in the arrangement that we have and and you know and this is not so when you get so what I'm saying is in a society where the government or men, for example, say this is what you wear and you have no say in that. It's not about the, it's not about the inconvenience of you having to cover, even if, yeah, I understand it's inconvenience, it's hot. Yeah, that's all bad, but it's completely secondary to the fact that you get to tell half of the population that you have to put this on and they have to listen. Right, and it show it's right. a symbol of everything else that they have to listen to, 
and they don't have not a only say. that it's it's a symbol of of what they're being forced to be. Right. Once once a woman has to don that, she's being told, "You are no longer yourself. You are only your future husband's property." Right, and also it shows you it shows you that this is probably not just a hijab, right? It shows you that their entire position the position in the society is in is below men and below everybody else, and they probably have. Many other things that they don't get to, they don't have a say in as well, right? It's just it's an indication of that. Just like in the example that I give, if if you see that I tell my wife that you need to sit in the corner until you learn your lesson, and she listens, you know that this relationship is unhealthy in probably in many other ways than just this experience. You know what I mean? But anyways, that's the example that I use often. Um, yeah. Okay, so did you want to address Banksy's uh, comments? Yeah, I, I do. I think we should address these comments when they come up. Um, I just want to repeat it. He said, Atheist Republic, I see Islam as a cancer, and if you don't hold back its growth, uh, it'll change the demographics of every place Islam goes. So this is how these countries are dealing with that. Well, the, the, how these countries are dealing with that is wrong. Okay, going after Muslims, beating them, right. um, torturing them, uh, killing people. It's the same thing that China is doing right now, right? China right. is is imprisoning people, uh, brainwashing people. It's sick and it's disgusting. And not only that, but it unifies people. When people have to go through tragedy and trauma, it unifies them. If like like Armin has been saying for years, if you really want to attack Islam, befriend a Muslim, mm -hmm. um, and it's sh show them compassion, show them. Uh, things other than Islam and right. I mean I just yeah right. and also I agree with you Islam is cancer but you don't defeat one form of cancer by re replacing it with another form of cancer right right you don't you don't beat cancer by beating it up yeah I mean I mean I, the whole the reason why we don't like Islam is because of um, because of it promotes the same ideas that makes you put people in concentration camps uh, or to force to or to take people's rights away from you know expressing themselves or you know so all the all the things that you're using against Islam are the things that are we don't like about Islam so you're not really achieving much because you're replacing you're becoming the monsters that you're trying to defeat atheists are under attack in many places if they were Christians their voices would be heard if they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.